Who loves a man Who looks nice and all But he don't understand And he plays with her feelings Like I play my guitar They make love in her dreams They make love in his car And he don't mean to hurt But he don't treat her right He makes promises in the day Then he breaks them at night that's when she comes with tears in her eyes Cause he don't know what to tell her So he just tells her lies She tends a bar every Sunday And she truly believes But he tends to ignore All the love that she gives And she dreams every night Of the things he won't do Cause she wants him to be happy But he doesn't want to And Frankie has taken Note from the door And Lucy has dropped All her things on the floor Matilda and Johnny Don't live here no more Ciao Nico. Hello everyone. Well, he is a songwriter, a singer, a guitar player, an arranger, a producer, and he is my good friend Tom Briding. Where is he? Let me see if I can add him to this coffee with, because I'm having coffee. I hope you have coffee too. El! Ciao! Thank you, Adam. Hey. There he is, Tom Brighting. Hi! Good to see you. Ciao, Tom. Ciao, Lorenzo. Can you hear me? I can. How have you been? I've been good. How are you? Oh, well, thanks. Not too bad. Not too bad. Good. <laughs> it's, been, it's been some crazy, crazy two years, right? It's been a really crazy two years. Some things, you know, you just never expect to see in your lifetime, and then you get to see it, I guess, you know. 
Yeah. How, is it are things picking up a little bit in in Pittsburgh, PA? A lot, yeah. There, there are no mask mandates now, uh, which is really nice to be out and to be comfortable and be able to talk to people face to face and to stand on a stage and sing and play and have people in front of us. So uh, it's really starting to feel like normal. And uh, what about in Italy? Is it different there still? Is it still a little restrictive or? A little bit, but uh, we have no masks since uh, a couple of days ago. Yeah, Sunday. Good. Good. Sunday, yeah. Um, so yeah, trying, you know, uh, trying to catch up a little bit and uh, see people's smiles. I know, right? That's what I miss. Right. Yeah, coffee. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Hi, Rudy. Hi everyone, this is my friend Tom. <laughs> I haven't seen Tom in a little while. It's been <laughs> maybe maybe a couple months, right? Yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen you in person though. I think maybe 10 years. Wow. Crazy, huh? Crazy, crazy. We have to catch up. And well, you, have to tell me, you have to tell me all the news. Well, I want to tell you, first of all, what you and your friendship meant to me years ago when we met. I don't know if your friends know the story, but I, uh, you came to Pittsburgh and we did some shows in this area, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, uh, through Bill Toms, my good friend, our good friend and my bandmate. And you said to me that you had uh, a lot of shows lined up in Austin and that I should come with you. And uh, so I did. And I'll never forget how gracious you were. You shared every single stage with me in Austin, Texas, and allowed me to share my songs from your stage every night, every venue we went to. And it just meant the world to me. And, uh, you know, that was a time when I was just getting started as a full time professional artist. And uh, yeah, it was it just meant so much to me. I'll never forget it. Uh, it was a pleasure. I'm so glad we did that. Uh, me too. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much for for reminding me. Uh, it was a good time. Good time in Austin. So uh, w what have you been up to? Oh, uh, keeping busy with music. And then I have a uh, job that's really interesting. I host college, university students and high school students from all over the country and we do service trips in my native state, my home state of West Virginia, uh, helping the needy, helping people in need, looking at uh, the fossil fuel industries and just Appalachian culture and history. Uh, it's just been really rewarding. So that and then Bill has been keeping us busy. We were in Columbus last week. Uh, we're in Cleveland, Ohio to, tomorrow night. No, tomorrow night we're with Billy Price at Jurgles which is just north of Pittsburgh and Warndale, and then Friday night in Cleveland. Next week, I'm in the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia, and then North Carolina. So we're traveling quite a bit and playing and working and doing all that stuff. Nice. So you're, you're, trying, you're trying to give uh, uh, the workers a voice for your songs, right? Yeah, so I have a very good relationship with the United Mine Workers Union, the coal miners union, and uh, I've tried to be a voice for them, uh, for their history, uh, and their their uh, their miners who made great sacrifices that uh, allowed the middle class to grow in America and allowed for fair wages and safer mines, coal mines, and. Uh, and also, you know, currently for try to be a voice for miners who are on strike right now for uh, that are facing unfair labor practices and uh, particularly in Brookwood, Alabama right now at the Warrior Met coal mine. They've been on strike there for over a year and uh, and they need to be reimbursed for all of the uh, sacrifices that they made getting the company out of bankruptcy and it's not happening. So. I try, I try to lend my voice wherever a just cause is, you know. Nice. And what's the unbroken circle? 
Uh, the Unbroken Circle. So actually, my friend Bill Toms and I wrote that song. That song was Bill's idea. Uh, I think most of that first verse was his, if not all of it. Um, and it just reflected the cycle, the, the circle or the cycle of poverty uh, and hardship that exists in a working class uh, region like Appalachia. Uh, particularly with, you know, coal miners, whatever. And I, of course, I wanted to direct it towards the coal miners and uh, because the rest of the songs I'd written um, reflected their history. So, yeah, but I have, that was really the brainchild of Bill Toms. He came up with that name, the Unbroken Circle. And uh, that went been, went on to be my most prolific project, you know. Yeah, because it's a project right now, right? It's It's an album and it's a project. It's an ongoing project. I don't think the the circle will never end. That's the idea, right? So nice, nice. W would you like to to play a song for us? I uh, would. Yeah. Maybe uh, we'll we'll let the music do the talking for a second, and then we'll keep talking some more. I'll play something from the Unbroken Circle. Let me play this. Uh, you know, just to kind of ex accentuate how how difficult uh, the past was, the history of these workers. I'll play you a song that uh, actually tells the story of a nine-year-old coal miner. Well, I work in the breaker and I'm just nine. Told him I was 12, no one asked if I was lying. Picking rock till my nails worn down to the quick. I get 65 cents for a 10 hour shift. Sitting in the screen room digging for slate. It's hot when it's summer. And it's cold when it ain't. I look down from the mountain, down to the tracks. Cold train crawls like a snake long and black. Two tall spires through the low hanging clouds. It's all I can see. My dirty cold time.
Beautiful. Thank you, Lorenzo. Bravo. Thank you so much. Wow, nine years old. Working Not in the common. You know, they a hundred years ago, the worst mind blast in American history, I think it was nineteen oh nine, I believe. But there were uh, the official death toll was three hundred and sixty two miners that were killed in that one blast. But uh, there are there's documentation to show that maybe more than 500 coal miners died that day because uh, there were maybe more than 150 of them were there with their fathers. They were children and they were there illegally, so they couldn't be counted among the official dead. So. Wow. So sad. A lot of heartache the, and, you know, great sacrifice. We have it pretty good today. But you know, that gap between the people that have the haves and the have nots, that gap is growing larger again every day. You know, we don't have the middle class that we used to have in, in America at least. And uh, mm -hmm. that's what I hate to see disappear. And that's part of why I lend my voice to the labor movement. So. Wow. I want to say hello to Eugenio and John, who's watching from Canada, and Canadina, of course, watching from Canada. And Lisa the Greaser is in Arizona today. Nice. <laughs> Ciao a tutti. <laughs> oh, Arizona. <laughs> yeah, nice. Wow. So, um, um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, you, you, you've been you've been invited a few times to uh, to the um, uh, Woody Guthrie Folk Festival, right in in yeah. Oklahoma. This... Ciao, Lisa. <laughs> um, yeah. How, how do you feel to 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 play there and to keep playing there? Oh, it's it's a such a great honor. Probably, uh, you know, it's just one of the greatest honors. I think I think the greatest honor of my career was being um, awarded a. Uh, lifetime membership, honorary lifetime membership to the UMWA, the United Mine Workers of America. But that uh, work of lending my voice to their causes, the health care, the retirees, and their benefits, and their pensions, and uh, their grievances, that's what led me to uh, be invited to the Woody Guthrie Folk Festival. I think it was 2000. 16 or maybe it was 17, I'm not sure, but I believe uh, without the COVID year, this would be my, and of course we did it online the COVID year. So this is my, I think it's my seventh Woody Fest in a row. Wow. Yeah, it's such a great honor. And I'm with so many incredible musicians uh, that play. I used to stay at the hotel and of course we play music out in the parking lot till, till sun up and get a few hours of sleep and start again. It's it's a, just a, it's a beautiful, beautiful festival. It really is. Nice. So great. I want to say hello to Susanna and John is writing. Uh, I have recorded one, one of Tom's songs on my album being released this Friday. Oh, great. Thank you, Lorenzo. You have a song of mine on there? It's John, John Allaire. Oh, John. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he just wrote this. Yep, John recorded a song called This Ain't California. He uh -huh. and his band, the Phi Delighties, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, John's a great, great friend. He's a great artist from Canada, from up in uh, Ottawa. And uh, so he's, is he on? I can't see the names, but is he watching? Yes, he's watching. He just wrote that. Yes. Oh, great. Hey, John. Hey, John, <laughs> can, can you play that song, Tom? I'd love to. Please. Yeah. So, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so this record, uh, this song, uh, I wrote it uh, quite a few years ago, actually. I think around 2005 or six, and John just recorded it. And he sent me a copy of his band's recording of it. And I liked it so much that I kind of adapted my version to fit his a little better, so. <laughs> Jacob's granddaddy bought a Midwest farm. His daddy said that piece of ground was his soul. 
For a couple of years, Jacob worked it hard, but the seeds of good fortune never took hold. The sun rises over his hometown, but it finds him every night just the same. The rivers run dry, his fields have turned brown, he's waiting for the sound of the rain. But this ain't California, ain't no milk and honey here. He watched three generations make a living from the land. Now he's watching it all disappear. And this ain't California, ain't nothing comes for free. He's looking for promise in the promised land, wherever that might be. This ain't California. California. Billy was a writer from the other side of town. She took a train out to LA. She worked a few deals, shopped them around, but no one even knew her real name. She moved on back, tried to settle down. She said, the simple life will do me some good. But every once in a while, she hits the clubs downtown and stumbles back home through the old neighborhood. This ain't California. She ain't in Hollywood. She tries to picture herself on a silver screen where things happen just like they should. This ain't California, and this script ain't hard to read. She's looking for promise in the promised land, wherever that might be. This ain't California. California. So Jacob sits in a bar with some outlaw boys, and tonight they want to hear Billy's songs. She'll pick up her guitar, she'll make a little noise, and everyone's going to sing along. They're singing, this ain't California. 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 Yeah, California. What a great song. Bravo. <laughs> John, I'm sorry I messed up the chorus on that one, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. So, uh, uh, Canadina said she uh, she saw John live in Ottawa. She's from Ottawa too. Yeah, great. He's nice, great. and he's a great guy. Good family. He's a good guy. So on on guitar and vocals, Tom Brighting, and on the saxophone, Phil Bronze. <laughs> Phil is here. Hey, Phil, what's happening? <laughs> John, awesome version. Okay. Oh, good, good. <laughs> you passed. <laughs> I passed. Good. Thanks. <laughs> Woohoo! Alessandra's here, which reminds me of um, Sunday's um, gig I, I played uh, in Varese for uh, Ukraine. It's a crazy war. Yeah, it is. Crazy war. Uh, you know, Lorenzo, I never thought we would see something like that in our lifetime. I've, you know, I've grown up with wars. The Vietnam War is a conflict, and we've had those skirmishes where 
uh, you know, over democracy and, and communism. And so, you know, the, the powers that be get together to, to push that notion in these isolated places. And then, of course, the Middle East, you know, that's biblical. I mean, that goes, the fighting there has been going on for centuries. Uh, but I never thought after, you know, the 20th century and the two world wars that we'd ever see another nation just come in and just invade a sovereign country. And it's really sad that, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable how quickly history can repeat itself and how quickly it's forgotten. Right. You know, I have another song I'd like to share with you. Um, is that okay? Is this a good time? Yeah. yeah, I'd love to hear it. This, well, what the, so this topic of discussion, um, Lorenzo, you know, one of the highlights of my music career was coming to Italy and touring with Bill Toms and Hard Rain at the time. And uh, my, I was just overwhelmed to, to get to visit Europe and to be overseas and to see uh, these things that I, places I had read about and seen and, um, but one of the, there were two moving moments, very moving to me. Uh, one was my first day and our friend, um, uh, uh, oh, Guido Maserati. Yeah. Uh, showing us around it, uh, around, uh, Venice. And there was a statue and I just noticed the statue it was beautiful. And I was looking at it and he turned to me and said, oh, that statue was made during peacetime and i said oh yeah i didn't quite understand and he said the saint is holding a book and it's open he said had it been made during wartime the book would have been closed and i just thought what a beautiful uh uh symbol uh, an art of you know a book being open and a book being closed and then the last day, Antonio Paragini, he was our tour manager that, you know, and tour guide at all the cities. And he took us to the Lake Malvino, one of the most beautiful sites I'd ever seen. And uh, we stood there, uh, the band and I and, and uh, Antonio. And Antonio turned to me and said, uh, he said, just over there, over the mountains, was the front. And I didn't understand, I said, the front. And he said, World War II. And all I could think of was, you know, fighting in such a beautiful place. So, uh, yeah, with that thought about it, you know, fighting of that nature returning to Europe. Uh, this song, I, I actually wrote this, Lorenzo. Um, we flew home and I slept for about 15 hours straight. I was exhausted after that tour. And the day we left, we I was with my our drummer, Bernie, and Bernie Her and Bernie and I, we just kept laughing to each other and saying, it's a long way home. It's a long way home. And uh, so I slept when I got home and I picked up the guitar. I woke up in the morning, walked down, picked up the guitar and wrote this song. I woke up this morning, I found my way to the window, and I looked across the rooftops to the world in front of me. And I wandered there, past the statue of a saint, and in his hands a book was closed, so everyone could see. It's a long way home. A long way home and every face reminds me I'm not traveling alone and it's a long way home a long way home a timeless march down an endless road it's a long way home And I walked along past castles and cathedrals.
that stood among the ruins amidst the fires of war. I found my brothers there beneath the clouds across a mountain that rose above a lake and we stood there on the shore and it's a long way home a long way home and every face reminds me i'm not traveling alone it's a long way home a long way home a timeless march down an endless road It's a long way home. Beautiful. Thank you. It was a beautiful trip and I had to capture that memory in music. So, and you were part of that. We were, I think we played in Milan and we opened a bottle of wine on the balcony and uh had some fun <laughs> i think we also went to uh asti yeah 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 oh it was not milan it was asti correct i did Asti's, not yeah. right <laughs> asti yeah, yeah i like that what, what what other memories of italy do you have uh i remember the first meal i had there um we traveled by a train from venice and went to uh, a, a small country town north of Ferrara. So somewhere between Venice and Ferrara, I think. And I uh, walked into an inn and I walked past the kitchen and saw about three elderly ladies all making, hand making pasta. And I knew it was pretty good. And we had a five course meal that I'll, st to this day, I'll never forget. It was the best meal I ever had, so. Um, <laughs> The people that I met there, that's part of the biggest, the, the two biggest things were, well, in playing music on stage in front of strangers, was it was fantastic. Uh, but aside from the music, the people that I met, the conversations that I had, and also the bonding that we had within the band. Uh, you know, our band is really close. I mean, we're like family. Our wives are friends and girlfriends or whatever. And uh, yeah, we're really tight. And uh, I don't know, I think that, was the first time I really felt pretty close to those guys. So, yeah. <laughs> How are they? Bill, Phil, Bernie? Bernie, Bernie's doing well. Bernie had uh, surgery uh, about a year ago. He's still, uh, he's not able to play the drums full time. So he came back and is, he's a percussionist. And uh, yeah, so he's still on the gigs. He's in the band and he's he's doing a great job. He sets up right behind me. So I love, that Bernie's still driving the rhythm behind me. And uh, yeah, and we have this uh, new fella, Eric Kurtzrock. He's a great drummer and uh, yeah, fits right in with the guys. It's, everybody's good. Nice. Yeah. So you're playing with, with the horn section tomorrow. Yes, the Solville Horns, which is Phil Bronze, uh, Steve Graham and George Arner. And uh, yeah, George and Steve are relatively new to the band, but I think they've been there for close to 10 years. <laughs> I don't know. Time goes by so quickly, five years at least. But uh, yeah, they're great guys. And it's fantastic having a horn section. It really is. There so, are nights where I concentrate on what I'm doing on the guitar because I just really want to listen to what they're doing over there sometimes, so. <laughs> oh, nice. So how many albums do you have? Um, Lorenzo, I have a lot of records. I kind of lost count. I think close to 15, I guess. Um, wow. Some of those, uh, I would say like probably 10 that were complete records, you know, where I started to, uh, with the objective of releasing a record. There are probably about five or six that are smaller uh, projects, EPs, whatever. Uh, right now, I'm working on getting a lot of those re-released and back on the streaming uh, uh, sites, uh, especially Beauty and Paradise. I only have, I think, three records that are uh, on Spotify and the iTunes and all those things. 
So I'm working on re-releasing a few of those to get some of the older stuff out. But mm -hmm. uh, my newest record is, it's three years old now. Time goes by so quickly, but uh, uh, it's called Love Commits Me Here. And uh, I'm real proud of that project. It's pretty much a live record, just acoustic guitar and singing. And uh, I brought in the Soulville horns to, on a, in a totally different role, just to add like kind of padding on some of the choruses and stuff. And uh, yeah, instead of showcasing what they're really good at, but they did a fantastic job with that out of their element maybe. And I uh, have a pedal steel player, Gary Jacob came in and played on the record. And, yeah. You still have your um, your home studio? Yeah, it's a little antiquated now. I'm probably still using the same computer that was here when you got here. So I don't I don't do work for hire anymore. Uh, I'm just too busy to take on other people's projects unless I really like them. There's a young girl named Sarah Fair. She comes over and she's recording some piano songs and uh, she's just so talented and she's great. And uh, my wife and I are friends with her family. And uh, so I love having people like that, you know, come over and it's really simple project, but mostly in the studio, I just use it for my own purposes now. Now, of course, if you came to America, you'd be, ha I'd love to record you again. So <laughs> I'd love to do that. I know. I can't wait to, to go back to Pittsburgh and to the U S lots of, lots have happened. How about you, Lorenzo? So you have a family now you have some children and. I do. I have a couple of children. Yeah. I That's have a boy and a girl. Yeah. How's well, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, incredible experience. I'm glad. I know you're a good dad for sure. <laughs> I try. That's I, all try. I do my best. I'm sure your best is good enough. <laughs> So yeah, so um, uh, what's what's the scene like in in Pittsburgh? Is uh, Leaf and Bean still there? It is, and they still do it, have Songwriter Saturday. Uh, you know, I have not played there since COVID, and it was a conscious decision that um, I got used to not having to go and play, you know, hired places and. I made a conscious decision. I play so often. I'm in front of people all the time with Bill's band and uh, with Hard Rain uh, that uh, my own shows now, Lorenzo, are just ticketed events. And they're primarily at the Club Cafe in Pittsburgh, which is kind of like the premier listening room, small listening room. And uh, I've got a show scheduled. I, it'll be announced on Friday, actually. But I can tell you now that it'll be on August the 30th, which is a Tuesday. And I've just been focusing on that. And then certain events that I'm invited to, uh, the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia next week, that's to celebrate. We've had a year long celebration of the Battle of Blair Mountain. Do you know about the Battle of Blair Mountain? It's, uh, it was the largest uh, uprising in American history aside from the Civil War. And it was a labor uprising. Mm. Uh, Sid Hatfield was a, a, a good sheriff that stood up for coal miners uh, refused to take money from the companies. And we're talking a, hundred, a century ago, you know, and uh, they, he was assassinated because of his devotion to uh, the righteous cause of the workers and the miners. And his assassination sparked a march that was more than 50 miles long. And they reached uh, the last obstacle into the town of Logan, which was Blair Mountain and their Sheriff Don Chafin and his men, uh, they had assembled about 3,000 folks uh, and three machine guns at the top of the mountain to keep the miners at bay. So they were in wow. armed conflict for three and a half days. And then the United States Army showed up. The president sent in the army, the National Guard and troops. And so, you know, there were 16,000 Americans at conservative estimate, estimates in a labor dispute, uh, you know, over the unjust mine guard system and the you know, the corrupt company system that existed back then. And, you know, so I've got this red bandana. I always keep this with me. And that's where the term redneck comes from. It's the, uh, these Appalachian, uh, when, when these, so the word existed before 1921, Lorenzo, but these miners all tied red bandanas around their necks to identify themselves as union coal miners. And when the U.S. troops showed up and they saw all these hell raising, uh, 
uneducated, poor mountaineers with the red bandanas around their necks. That kind of galvanized the term for the poor, uneducated, hell-raising, if you will, of Appalachia, which, you know, that's what it closely resembles today. So would you like to hear a song about the Battle of Blair Mountain? <laughs> that's a pretty good segue, right? <laughs> <laughs> I usually talk about this beforehand, so it kind of came natural. I hope I'm in tune with a uh, a natural tune so that I can play the harmonica. Let me check this real quick. And I hope the sound is good. Uh, Does it sound okay on your end? It sounds good to me. I I, I hope people can hear can hear um, uh, can you know the sound does you justice. Uh, let us know. Rebecca, let us know. Dada, dada. You want to say hi to a few people? I think I'm a little out of tune. I want to say hi to everyone. Good. Uh, dada, I haven't seen you in a while. E da un po' che non ci si vede, Dada. Rebecca, rednecks were also those with the farmer's tan yeah. or sunburn. Yes. E.G. Workers. That's the context. Alisa, thank you. Sounds good. KK, sounds good. Dina, thank you. And Rebecca, thank you. I think I'm good. I'm glad you're saying hello to everybody. I, I don't have those messages in front of me, so hi, everyone. <laughs> Maybe you should try uh, swiping that thing from, from left to right or for, from right to left. Maybe, I don't know. That's okay. I'm all right right now. It's on the screen and... See if it works. Okay, maybe I'll try that after the song. I hate, okay. I hate to lose it before the tune, maybe, you know. I am a union miner. And I'll work all night and day. I am a union miner. I'll mine your coal for union wage. In 17, I left my home for this country's flag. I fought the war by 21 in my hometown. Well, I weren't welcome in the Legion Hall no more because I am a union miner and I'll mine your coal. For union wage, and for that wage, I'll lay my life when I march down from Marmet, armed with my coat and Winchester, a red bandana tied about my neck I am a union miner and I'll mine your call for union wage strong I'll make my stand 
my union brothers all there with me we ain't coming home till sheriff chafin is hanging from a sour apple tree i am a union miner and i'll work all night and day i am a union miner and i'll mine your coal for union wage i'll mine your coal for union wage Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lorenzo. So what do I do? You said try to swipe and maybe I'll get comments. Yes. <laughs> oh no. So yeah, I see that. It does say it reveals them, but yeah. I think I'm getting pieces of those, but my screen is so small that I can only see parts of those stuff. Yeah. Well, I want to let you know that Elisa and Kelly are sending you big applause. Thank you very much. I appreciate and, it, both of you. And Dina, Canadina, sending you hearts. And everybody awesome. enjoying it. Eugenio, thanks, Tom, for having a coffee with us and for entertaining us. Wait a minute, it went away. With your great music. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Wonderful. And, and Rebecca, great. applause. <laughs> great. Nice. So what's right. your, what's your favorite? I'm sorry. Uh, I want to warm up my coffee. Okay. Coffee maker and I need a little more. What time is it? How long do we go? Oh, we can go some more if you want. If okay. you. Let me get you, some more coffee. Then, all right? Okay. Okay. Shall I play a song? Yes. Let's see. I don't know if it works when, when we, uh, split screen i think my my sound will be not so good but i can try i can try my uh my new song my newest song it's called uh, more messy than me can you hear the guitar? Yeah, exactly. Okay, because I'm going through this little mic here. Oh, <laughs> More messy than me. More messy than me. Found me a woman. It's more messy than me. More scatty than me. More scatty than me. Oh! Tell me a woman more scatty than me. Where she can never find what she's looking for. She's always searching and searching. Sometimes I wish it was me she was looking for. Hey, baby, can't you see I'm here? More tardy than me. More tardy than me. Tell me a woman more tardy than me. Well, she said she was on her way a couple hours ago. I'm sweating under the sun by the side of the road. She's more naughty than me, more naughty than me. Found me a woman that's more naughty than me, more hungry than me, more hungry than me. Found me a woman that's more hungry than me. She doesn't smoke, but she has a chemical hunger anytime or night and day. Oh, where is she now? 
Oh, raiding that bridge again. More, 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 more cranky than me. More cranky than me. I found me a woman. It's more cranky than me. Well, I know a couple ways to make her. Just a little jealous, mad, or testy. That's if I need to. Whenever I need to tease my little lady. More crazy than me. More crazy than me. Found me a woman. It's more crazy than me. Well, I thought I was the weird one. She's proven me wrong again, my craziness. Think I have to write a song about her. Or maybe one that goes like this. More messy than me. More messy than me. Well, I found me a woman who's more messy than me. Yeah. Nice work. Great. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> you have a new record coming out? Uh, I think I'm getting ready to uh, release a new one. Yes, it's been a long time. Yeah. I have released a few um, a few songs occasionally online. Yeah. We need a new record. Hey, Brew is here. You hey. remember Brew? I remember Brew. Good to see you. <laughs> Ciao, Brew. Ciao, Brew. Uh, grazie, Eugenio. Uh, it's actually Lorenzo. Uh, it's like Lorenzo actually met the bartenders at Excuses Bar and Grill. Oh, <laughs> that's that what Elisa wrote. Hey, <laughs> hey she, excuse me. Is that Elisa? She, Probably. Elisa, is she uh, messy yeah. and, and, and tardy and scatty and everything? Elisa is awesome. She's the best. She's one of Pittsburgh's finest. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she was one of the first people I met when I first went to Excuses many, many years ago. Mm hmm And Excuses, your listener, your viewers don't know, is it's just a bar on the south side. And, uh, oh, is that not her? <laughs> no, I think it's not her. She's, uh, she was talking about, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> She's not messy and scatty and tardy and everything. <laughs> yeah. So Excuses is a bar on the south side that we've been playing for many, many years. Sometimes we refer to it as Hard Rain Headquarters. And the other great Pittsburgh venue is Moondogs. That's uh, one of my, it may be my favorite place to play. Ronnie is Moondog. That, has is that the song that, sorry. Good. Is what that song? the place that uh, Todd Snyder wrote a song about? Uh, I don't know. It's possible. He, you know, Ronnie's had some amazing people come through, mostly uh, blues people. Uh, you know, Coco Taylor played there. Uh, just they had the uh, uh, the Nighthawks were there just about two weeks ago. I mean, wow. amazing phenomenal blues acts have uh, toured and gone through there. We recorded uh, Bill Thompson, Hard Rain. We recorded one of our records up there at Moondogs. Nice. Yeah, it's a great, great Pittsburgh venue. Hi, Scott. Giddy up. <laughs> Scott Leon, friend oh, of yours. Scott Leon, hey. He's Ciao. a great. Scott has been recording shows of mine and Bill's for many years now. And Scott's just one of the nicest people you could meet. I'm glad he tuned in. To, hello, Scott. Good to see you. Ciao from Italy. Moondogs, Elisa, yeah, I want to go to Moondogs too. <laughs> I need to get back to Pittsburgh. I'd love to see you back here. It'd be great. What was the, what was the place? Uh, I think I played a place uh, that had a, an Italian name. Cefalos, I think. Yes, Cefalo. And we would say Cefalo. That's right, yeah. Cefalo. Cefalos, yes. That's when I thought your name was Bertaccini, and you set me straight. Bertaccini. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I remembered yeah. that. But uh, so, so the polo, I think it's still open, but they don't. It's not a music venue any longer. They just okay. do private events and things like that. So. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, what's your favorite place to have coffee? In, in oh, Pittsburgh? Leaf Green, without a doubt. Yeah. So I, 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 maybe I didn't say enough about that. I, uh, so I stopped doing the songwriter Saturdays just because I wanted to do the ticketed events only. That's going to be enough for me. Um, but I still love the Leaf and Bean. I try to frequent it when I can. It's still the coolest place in the strip. And if you visited Pittsburgh, Lorenzo, that'd be one of the first places I would take you. So yeah, it's still there on the, on 22nd and Penn. Great, great place. I, uh, I played there with uh, with with Tom and with you and with uh, um, Mark Reisman. Oh right, yep, I do remember that. And I even had a, a cigar here <laughs> next to my harmonica because Jim had yep. me to. <laughs> Jim Robinson, the owner. Cool. Yeah, I was sure of that. <laughs> nice uh i need to get back i need to get back <laughs> well I, i'd love to go to italy again lorenzo i'd love to bring my wife janet with me to to italy to italy i would love that i would so we'll, well see you know, whenever whenever you you want to go to italy you have a place to stay and we can maybe play some shows together would that be possible i would love to do it oh yeah I, you know I believe things are opening up a little bit, so uh, we have to work on that. I will. I will. Hey, let me introduce you to our newest family member, Tyson. Can you see Tyson there? I don't know where. There he is. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Nice to meet you. I remember Maddie. Yep, I knew you really liked Maddie. And I just thought I'd introduce you to uh, Maddie lived a long time. She lived to be 15 years old, actually. But I figured you'd like to see Tyson. Ciao, Tyson. He's so good. He's sitting right here at my feet and he hasn't moved. Uh, he came in when I started to play the harmonica. That's what brought him in. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Elisa, he cooked for me. You cooked some uh, uh, feta pasta. For me. Oh, right. That's one of my favorite dishes. <laughs> With the tomato and basil, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very nice. All right, my friend. So, uh, oh, last question. What's yes. in your pockets? In my pockets? Yes. <laughs> I have absolutely nothing in my pockets. Really? Because, yeah, honest to God, because I'm home and I just took a shower. I have nothing <laughs> in my pockets. I have brand okay. new jeans. No pot, nothing in. I got a lot of stuff on the table. I've got picks and tuners, <laughs> sharpies and lyrics, and but nothing in my pockets. But you have coffee in your hands. Yes. And do you still have uh, maybe a song in in your head? Um. What? What to play one more? You mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What would I? What? Do you, is there anything of mine that you remember that you'd like to hear? I'd like to hear something new, maybe something that's on your new CD. Okay. Love commits me here, right? Yeah. Let me play you the title cut for that song, for that record. Okay. I like it because it's, uh, um, you know, it's kind of, the the record's autobiographical. So there's nothing on this record that isn't that isn't real, so to speak. You know what I mean? When I refer to my parents and different things as I do in this song. So my dad uh, does call my mother, her name is Mary, and my dad calls her May, that was his nickname. And, uh, uh, you know, we had, a, uh, we had a terrible shooting in Pittsburgh, uh, a, a hate crime with, uh, in a synagogue in Pittsburgh, the Tree of Life, where uh, a lot of the uh, Jewish people there were killed. And um, <clears throat> so that was fresh on my mind when I wrote this too. And, just kind of that reminder to myself, actually, that love always conquers hate. Mm -hmm. 
I was born in 63, first boy of the four. I lived up to my family's role, neither rich nor poor. My mother's name is Mary. My father calls her May. Will my angel find me today? Tree of life, tree of love, universal law. I have heard the trumpets within these city walls as the blood of a lamb drove death's darkness away. Will my angel find me today? Should I seek asylum before my claim is heard? Hey, I cannot be trusted though I live the word 40 years. Beneath the cloud, I wish would blow away. Will my angel find me today? Angel of mercy, guardian dear. Day and night, love commits me here. Be at my side to guard and light my way. Will my angel? find me today poverty corruption war and climate change we think alone in clarity collectively insane governed here by madmen and still so far away will my angel find me today i was born in 63 first boy of the four. I lived up to my family's role, neither rich nor poor. My mother's name is Mary. My father calls her May. Will my angel find me today? My mother's name is Mary. My father calls her May. Will my angel find me today? Very nice. Thank you, Lorenzo. I haven't played that song in so long. I kind of forgot a little bit, forgot the chords, but the message comes across. That's all that matters, right? Yeah. The, uh, one last question. Do you, uh, um, do, do, you do these uh, live streams every now and then? I, I, I haven't, no. I mean, no, you haven't. Have, no. Um, you know what I do is if I write a new song, sometimes I'll just post the video of the song and do that. But, uh, no, I haven't done any kind of live stream. I should probably do more. Uh, I'm so glad you invited me to this. I really enjoyed this. It was great. And it's, it was good for me to do that. So I hope a lot of my friends are out there. I want to say hi to everybody that visited and uh, make sure you friend Lorenzo and follow him and his music. Lorenzo is just a fantastic guy, fantastic artist. So, oh, thank you. Thank I, I you. think I saw uh, I think I saw Heather Toms in there at some point. Hey, Heather, and uh, she's expecting so. Oh, Bill, really? Bill and Joyce will be grandparents again. Nice. Everybody's excited about that. All the best, Heather, and everyone. All the best. Yeah. And thank you so much, Tom, for being with us and uh, sharing your beautiful songs and soul. You too, Lorenzo. Thanks so much. Thank you, my friend. We'll see each other again. Ciao. I hope very soon. Yeah, Ciao. Me. Ciao. Thank you for having coffee with us. I loved it. Thanks. We'll Bye. do it again. Ciao, Tom. Bye-bye. Ciao.